Yep, I'm I'm with Nadem 100%. It's going to be a good game. And I, I like Alan Shearer said as well back in uh, in English TV about how, like, you know what? Yes, France have Kylian Mbappé, et cetera. But England should also be a team that's feared because this is a very good side. What do you what do you think, uh, James, of this matchup? I mean, plenty of talent everywhere. The defending champion uh, and, and England, who's, like, clearly looking good, feeling confident. What do you make of this matchup? My view on this is that if England are to win this game, that I think they have to go for it. I don't... They've been... Phases in the games, even the games they've won out here, where they've been quite passive in possession. Think about the first half now against Senegal. It was, let's feel our way into the game. And they were getting pressed and they were giving the ball away. Senegal created a couple of chances, didn't take them. One really good save from Jordan Pickford. I think if they try and be methodical and try and be ultra pragmatic against France, France have got the players to nick to nick a goal, nick a win, knock them out. I think if England go on the front foot, they can cause problems. And, and this really comes down to just how brave Gareth Southgate is going to be with his team selection. In the past, generally speaking, when he's played a team that he thinks is better than England, he's gone to a back three, which effectively is a back five, and try to almost wait it out against these teams. When he's felt they're the better side, as he has done in all four of these games so far, he's played 4-3-3, and try to really not go for it necessarily, but really give the players a bit more of a license to, to, to attack and, and burst into life as they did in that Senegal game. I think if they try and, I'm not saying go gung ho, all guns blazing, but I would like them to just stick with the same system and more or less the same approach, just be a little bit more on the front foot from the get go rather than thinking, let's try and feel our way into this and let's, let's not lose it. I think if the plan is to just not lose it, they will lose it because. They'll concede too much ground, too much territory. Think about what happened in the European Championship final. It came out, it scored. 1-0, Italy had gone. Didn't know how to handle it. They weren't expecting the change to the back three. They could have gone, gone from the stroke and killed the game. Didn't. Allowed Italy to get back into it. Second half, they started controlling the ball. Equalised, gradually conceded territory. And OK, it ended up losing on a penalty shootout. But all the impetus went from the play. Think about what happened in 2018. england Croatia semi-final. Went 1-0 up. Look good on the front foot and started to get tired, gradually started to concede possession, dropped back, conceded an equaliser, went out in extra time. If they if they tr if that pattern continues again, they will lose to France. But if they can stay on the front foot and really believe that they can win and be brave and take risks and keep pushing forward, even if they do get that early goal, they can do it. They can beat France. They've shown it. They've got the, the attacking players. I don't see particularly in France's midfield, anything to be particularly worried about. You think about, obviously, N'Golo Kante and Paul Pogba not being there. Huge bonus for England. Also, you think about the runners in behind. You're not, you know, Olivier Giroud's not going to get in behind you. You've only really got to worry about, only got to worry about Mbappe and Dembele. But those, those issues are going to come out wide. And you've, in Kyle Walker in particular, everybody talks about his recovery pace. You know where those threats are going to come from. I think he might pick someone on the left side. Uh, if he sticks with 4-3-3, I think he'll pick someone on the left side with pace thinking about going the other way. But England have just got to believe they can win this game and play in that manner. Play with that front foot risk-free, um, risk-taking style. And if they do, I think they can win it. Oh, OK. Well, Mbappe, the big difference maker then. Actually, Bukayo Saka in his press conference today, he had a strange question put to him, linking him to Kylian Mbappe. I know you were there, James. So before we hear from you on it, let's see Saka himself. Hi, Bukayo. Um, tournaments like the World Cup make stars, and in Russia, it was Kylian Mbappe bursting onto the scene. You are already a star, but considering how well you've been playing, do you think you'll be the Kylian Mbappe of this World Cup? <laughs> First of all, thank you um, for your compliment, but um, no, I think, <laughs> I think there's only one Kylian Mbappe, and at the same time, there's only one me. You know, I just want to be myself and help my team in the best way I can. You know, there's a lot of young players in this tournament. I can name so many. And even in our team, you know, there's another um, young player alongside us doing unbelievable, unbelievably well in Jude Bellingham as well. So I'm just happy that we're, we're all here. We're all doing well. And the priority is to try and win the tournament rather than be the um, player of the tournament or young player of the tournament, like you said. 
Uh, nice stuff. So you were there, James. What, what what were you thinking when you were there? First time I've ever heard Kylian Mbappe and Bakayo Saka compared together, ever. I, I, don't, I don't think that is a thing that people are doing, frankly. I, but I thought he handled it very well. He's a, he's a, I know him a little bit from covering Arsenal. He's, a, he's, such a, he's a great kid, you know, really, really humble, really down to earth. Takes, you know, but, but takes things like that in his stride and knows how to sort of reframe it um, as he did there. I thought very well. Um, look, I mean, he's, you know, he's he's banging the mix now to start, isn't he? I mean, he, he knows he's got a battle to get in the team he plays for, let alone to be in the team of the tournament or the young player of the tournament. Um, and he knows that's the battle he's got to win first. I mean, it'd be difficult for Gareth Southgate to drop him, I think, after the way he played against Senegal. But, um, you know, he, he knows the, the, the attacking options that England have got. Um, and, yeah, that's the first battle he has to win before he can think about killing Mbappe. I mean, let's be honest, Mbappe, you know, last last World Cup, he scored four goals. He scored in the final. He became the second teenager ever to score in the final. And he's gone on to become one of the top players in the world. But Kyle Saka could could do something similar one day, but he is several steps behind Kylian Mbappe, as I think, as he pretty much alluded to there, he would admit himself. You know what? Just very quickly, to the thing about this England team and everything that we've been talking about, I, you know what? There's so much youthful talent here that it's not just, I mean, to James's point, Bukaya Saka was excellent there, but like, you know, think about Phil Foden and Jude Bellingham, who Saka, you know, there is such an energy to this England side that they, they, they are so happy and content on being themselves. And that's what gets me really excited about this England team. The future is the present. And that's the most important thing, I think. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.